All right, hello. Uh, so let's take a look at problem one from chapter five on property relationships. Uh, and so property relationships require lots of practice to master. Um, and so here we'll get started with some good practice, some exercise. So in problem one, uh, we're told that for an ideal gas, du dv at constant t is equal to zero. Knowing this, show that for an ideal gas, this implies that a, the heat capacity Cv is independent of volume, and B, the internal energy U is only dependent on T. Okay. So alright, so in the problem statement, we're told that du dv at constant T is equal to zero. Okay, and so already just looking at this, right, I see that I have U uh, and I'm using independent variables V and T. So remember for a single component, single phase system, um, I have two degrees of freedom. So I need to pin down two intensive variables to um, pin down the state of my system, or I need to specify two intensive variables to pin down the state of my system. Uh, so here you say would be using V and T um, to characterize U. Okay. All right, so now looking at A, okay, we wanna show that the heat capacity is independent of volume, okay? Well, I remember that the heat capacity is by definition du dt at constant v. Okay, so Cv is defined as du dt at constant v. Okay, and so just to kind of you know remind us of, of what we have here is so for a single component single phase system, I need two independent variables to pin down the state of my system. Okay, so um, u um, if I want wanted to create a plot of u as a function of t and v, um, the result would be a three-dimensional surface, all right? u versus t versus v. All right, so now when I say a is defined as cv, or cv is defined as du dt at constant v, um, what that is is if I look at this three-dimensional surface, I'm going to draw a cutting plane through my three-dimensional surface at constant v. So cutting through my three-dimensional surface um, with this plane of constant v, the result is going to be a two-dimensional surface of u versus t um, at that fixed v. So cv tells us the rate of change of u with respect to t at that fixed v. Okay, um, And I bring that up because oftentimes, you know, I have students just tell me that, you know, cv is my constant volume heat capacity. That means it's independent of volume. Okay. Well, okay, for an ideal gas, uh, we're going to show that that's the case, but that's not true in general, okay? So try and, you know, keep in mind what these partial derivatives um, actually mean, okay? But getting back on track here, um, so when I look at my definition of CV, I see I have U again with independent variables T and V, all right? So again, I'm thinking U, all right? So I'm thinking about U uh, with independent variables T and V. All right. So if I want to show that the heat capacity is independent of volume for an ideal gas, okay, what that's equivalent to then, right, is if I want to show that something's independent of volume, I'd want to show that that, you know, CV is, is, is a constant at a given volume, right? So that it's a constant at a given volume. It's not changing with respect to volume, okay? So what I want to show is that dCV dV at constant t is equal to zero. Okay, what I want to show is that Cv doesn't change with respect to v; that it's independent of v. So essentially, you know, if I have this three-dimensional surface again, so if we're looking at u, say, well, well yeah, so we can think about u for the case of an ideal gas, or let's think about Cv. So if I'm looking at Cv with independent variables v and t, so if I want to plot Cv as a function of t and v, the result again will be a three-dimensional surface. Here I'm going to draw a cutting plane at constant t, right? Because I can only differentiate with respect to one variable at a time. So I draw my cutting plane uh, at constant t, and then the result will be a three-dimensional surface of cv with respect to v at that fixed t. Okay. And what I want to show is that. So if I want to show that cv is independent of volume, so at that fixed t, I want to show that cv is constant, right? That it doesn't change um, with respect to v. So if something doesn't change with respect to v, right, then its derivative is going to be zero, right? If it's constant, the derivative of a constant is just zero. Okay, so I want to show that partial cv, partial v at constant t is equal to zero. Okay, I want to show that, okay? How does this help me out at all, all right? Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my definition of cv, okay, and I'm going to plug it in, okay? 
So this is equivalent to the partial of, well, let me first write CV is partial U, partial T, okay, a constant V. Then I want to take the partial of that with respect to V, a constant T. Okay, so here I have U with independent variables T and V, and then I'm going to take the result of that and differentiate again where I'm using independent variables V and T. Okay, what I have here is a mixed derivative. So remember when dealing with mixed derivatives, the order of differentiation doesn't matter. So if I look at this expression that I have here, okay, I have du dt at constant v, that's just my definition of cv, it doesn't get me any further, okay, but, okay, um, mixed derivatives, order of differentiation doesn't matter, so that I'm, you know, I'm stuck here, so let's go ahead and just, you know, see if I change up the order of differentiation, if that gets me anywhere. Well, if I change up the order of differentiation, what that means is, first I'm going to differentiate u, with respect to v and a whole t constant, then I'll take the result of that and I'll differentiate with respect to t holding v constant. Okay, And how that helps me out is in the problem statement we're told that du dv at constant t is just equal to zero. Okay, So then I have the differential of zero um, with respect to t which is just zero. It's the derivative of a constant. Okay, So in the problem statement we're told that this du d v at constant t is equal to zero. So the derivative of zero with respect to t is just zero. Okay, cool, that's it. So you just showed that uh, knowing du dv at constant t is equal to zero for an ideal gas, you just showed that um, cv is independent of volume. Okay, and so again, pictorially, you know, what we have going on is if I used uh, independent variables t and v to characterize cv, Okay, which makes sense based on the definition of CV. Okay, um, so I could construct a plot, a uh, three-dimensional uh, surface, so a three-dimensional plot of CV versus T and V. Okay, I'm drawing a cutting plane um, through that um, three-dimensional surface. Okay, at constant T. And then, if I look at the resulting two-dimensional um, two-dimensional plot of CV um, versus V at that fixed T, um, we show that CV is just constant, right? It's independent of volume. Okay, so CV is independent of volume uh, for the case of an ideal gas. Okay, and so, you know, the spoiler alert would be um, when what we'll leverage later on um, in the back of your book, um, CP is tabulated for, um, so you, you have tabulations of ideal gas heat capacities. Ideal gas heat capacities are tabulated as polynomials as a function of temperature, because um, Cp of an ideal gas, uh, likewise, will only be a function of T. Okay, cool. Remember, this is only true for the case of an ideal gas. Um, this is not true in general. For real fluids, Cv will be a function of V as well, right? And what that's going to mean is, you know, that three-dimensional surface, if I, um, you know, say, cut this um, at a given temperature, um, then, you know, the rate of change of CV with respect to V um, at that fixed T um, will not be constant. Okay? All right. I guess I kind of, you know, dwell on it. So again, the misconception is it's my constant volume heat capacity, so it must be independent of volume. Um, no, that's only true for an ideal gas, right? The constant volume part just comes from the definition that we're looking at the differential of U with respect to T at, you know, fixed V. So if I'm looking at U, um, three-dimensional surface for U with independent variables T and V, if I were to look at different cutting planes of V, um, the rate of change of U with respect to T is going to be different, right? So CV is not, in general, independent of V. Okay? All right. So uh, that's enough getting off task. Uh, so B. So B, um, so given this, uh, show that the internal energy U is only dependent on T. Okay? Well, um, as we were alluding to in the problem statement, Okay, we're working with U with independent variables T and V. OK, 
Okay. So remember, our favorite independent variables are going to be P, V, and T. Okay. And so typically, we're going to deal with T and P, or T and V as our two sets of independent variables. Okay. So here we're using T and V. Um, so what I'm going to do here, all right, so if I'm going to take T and V to be my independent variables of U, uh, my next step is going to be uh, let's write out the total differential for U. Uh, and so I'm going to write out the total differential of U from, you know, a mathematical standpoint. Okay, so if I want to write out uh, expression for the total differential of U, okay, I have the DU, okay, so I'm going to differentiate with respect to my first variable, holding the second constant, dt. Then next, I'll differentiate with respect to my second variable, holding the first constant, okay, dv. All right, now in the problem statement, we're told that du dv at constant t is equal to zero. So what that means then is the second term is just zero. Okay, so we're left with then du is just equal to partial u, partial t, a constant v dt. All right, so our volume dependent term is gone. All right, and so with that, you just showed that u is only a function of t for an ideal gas. Okay, bam. Okay, remember this is only true for an ideal gas um, where du dv at constant t is equal to zero. Okay, so knowing that, when we write out the total differential of u, we show that the volume dependent term is zero, uh, it gets killed off. And so what we're left with then is that u uh, is only a function of t for the case of an ideal gas. All right, and that is problem one.